Welcome back everyone to a brand new CK2 Game of Thrones series on this channel and if you've read the title of this video then you already know what's going to happen. We will play during the Blackfire Rebellion. Now Westeros is on the brink of civil war as Daemon Blackfire, the legitimized bastard son of King Aegon IV, has risen in rebellion against his trueborn brother King Daron the Good, forcing the lords of Westeros to choose between the Black Dragon and the Red. Meanwhile, in the north, House Stark faces a rebellion led by the dangerous Skagosi, and across the narrow sea, the three cities of Bravas and Pentas are at war. It is up to you to decide the fate of the Seven Kingdoms. And I have chosen to decide the fate of the Seven Kingdoms by playing as Daemon Blackfire himself, greatest of the great bastards, wielder of the ancestral sword of House Targaryen, and some say Aegon the Conqueror reborn. Daemon Blackfire is everything his half-brother Daron is not and the ideal candidate for those discontent with the current regime. Even their father was believed to have preferred Daemon over Daron. Now Daemon seeks his supposed birthright at the urging of his half-brother, Aegor Bittersteel, and nearly half the realm has rallied to his cause. So of course, we'll immediately start into the game. There is so many important characters, but first we actually need to check the game rules. I think I'm just going to load slot 1. I think those are the correct ones. No Sunset Invasion. Um, yeah, direct action, no release prisoners after punishment, white walkers are harder, uh, we have dragon hatching and taming on hard as well, we have less dual outcome randomness but more frequent battles, and then a few other things as well, okay, I think this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and start the game, and now I will quickly check out the situation that we're in, and then I will have to take some time to... Um, well, to appoint all or to mark all of the important characters as special interest because there are quite a few in this scenario. But for now, let's close this for now. Uh, although bastard born, I am Targaryen on both sides. Seeing this, my father, King Aegon IV, legitimized me in addition to bestowing upon me Blackfire, the sword of Targaryen kings. Rumors abound that my half-brother, King Daron II, is the bastard of my uncle Aemon the Dragon Knight, making me the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. And we will claim what is ours, that's for sure. But for now, uh, we'll, we can obviously have a look at the beautiful terrain map mode, but I will gonna switch to the realm map mode because that's a little bit more interesting to us. So as you can see, uh, there's most of the uh, of the realm is split. Uh, the Veil, vale, the Westerlands, probably the Reach is the most divided. Dawn uh, is united behind House Martell, except for the Yorn Woods of the Bone Way, they have sided with us. So it's it's interesting. It's certainly interesting. We have the loads of Harrenhal on our side as well, uh, the Brackens, and I think House Mandrake is ruling the Blue Fork here, and Red Fork. No, is it green? It's Blue Fork and Red Fork. There you go. Um, so yeah, this is certainly, certainly very interesting. The North, as, I, as I've read out, they are currently facing a rebellion from the dangerous Skagosi. Now, I gotta say, in canon, the Skagosi are much, much more powerful than they are in the game. Uh, which, I mean, it's it's hard to model them, I suppose. But yeah, they're, this rebellion is not going to be as difficult as it, as it is in the books. Regardless, uh, as I said, I'm going to quickly go off camera and I will introduce... I will mark all these special important characters and then I will introduce them to you so that we can uh, really know what's going on. So I'll see you in a second. I marked quite a few characters as special interest and some of them have a very interesting story that I would like to, uh, well, talk about for a second. Now, most of you already know much about my father, Aegon IV. Now, he is uh, known as the Unworthy. He's considered to be one of the most terrible, if not the most terrible Targaryen king Westeros has ever seen. He's also, of course, wildly renowned for his many children, uh, amongst them obviously my half-brother Darren the Good and myself, Daemon Blackfire, and various others. However, not many of you uh, perhaps know much about my mother, Dana the Defiant. Now, she was actually locked away along her sisters um, in the Maiden Vault by her brother, Baelor the Blessed. Um, so... Um, she then earned her nickname as the Defiant because of her wild nature and her her wild personality. And so she, what she did was she would escape her confinements various times. And one of these times she escaped, uh, she actually went to see my father Aegon the Fourth, and together they had a child, me. 
And when it became clear that uh, that she was pregnant and I was essentially born, um, Belu the Blessed, my uncle, actually started to fast for 40 days. And upon the 41st day, he actually died. So I guess in a way you could say that our birth caused the death of Belu the Blessed. Um, but yeah, that is what that is why my mother is known as uh, Dana the Fine. She is uh, wildly loved by the small folk in King's Landing because you know of her personality. She's very attractive and she's also a great fighter. Actually, yeah, has a huge dual skill there. Um, so yeah, this is my mother. Um, I've marked as an important character. Next up, we have my wife. Uh, that's uh, obviously a very important character we need to talk about as well. Now she has been a loyal wife. She's uh, given birth to 10 children, I think seven sons and three daughters, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, certainly she's she's done good in that regard. Um, she is the daughter of the Archon of Tyrosh. Um, I'm actually yeah going to mark him as an important character as well, and I will go ahead and form an alliance. Now, as far as I know, I don't think I'm going to be able to call him into this war, but we might have use or we might be able to make use of his forces later on uh, but that's something that we'll have to we'll have to see but yeah my wife uh, as I said she's loyal but she she's not exactly our love our true love is our half-sister Daenerys uh, princess Daenerys now our love was denied by Daron I think uh, instead um, he married her off to the Lord of Dawn which if I'm not mistaken brought Dawn into the fold um, of the Seven Kingdoms, and in turn, uh, Daron has married uh, Mariah Martell as well. In fact, actually, I might be wrong here. Hmm. A anyway, um, I'm not entirely sure about that, but yeah, so there was a double marriage. Dawn is now in, well, as p a part of the Seven Kingdoms, but that caused me to lose the love of my life, and uh, she's very depressed over it as well. Now, uh, at her wedding tournament, I actually wore her favor, and uh, in the final tilt, I was going up against um, the the Lord of Dragonstone and the firstborn son of Daron the Good, Baylor the Second. Now, Baylor is known as Breakspear because in the final tilt he unhorsed us, and um, yeah, therefore we could not crown our princess as the Queen of Love and Beauty. Instead, Baylor uh, was the winner of the tournament. Now, uh, his father, we already briefly mentioned various times, Daron the Good, um, he's currently sitting the Iron Throne, but there are rumors that he is not a legitimate son of uh, Aegon and Nerys, but instead that he's also a bastard son uh, fathered by Prince Aemon the Dragon Knight. And these rumors were uh, greatly spread by um, one of our brothers, uh, Bittersteel, uh, many of you know him, for his actions after the Blackfire Rebellion, but so far, none of this has obviously happened. Um, he's a great fighter, as you can see, probably the best fighter out of all of the great bastards, and um, he is married to my eldest daughter, Kala Blackfire, so uh, he, um, as I said, he he's going to be probably one of our greatest commanders, and he's also amongst a second character, uh, the one that has pushed us to start our rebellion the most. Now the second character that has uh, been, yeah, that has supported us, um, has supported the idea of our kingship was Sir Quentin Fireball or Sir Quentin of House Ball and he was the master at arms at the Red Keep under Aegon IV and he was actually promised to become a member of the King's Guard but this position was denied by Daron the Good which is why he is uh, obviously quite pissed off and decided to join with us and as I said he was one of the main uh, people to convince us that we should rise up in rebellion. He's actually also our friend so if we have a look at our relations we see our marriage ties with the Archon of Tyrosh, we also have some ties with Thorn um, uh, but yeah mostly we have rivals in Baylor and Daron and Quentin is our only friend so far. Um, and yeah last but not least there's one more character that I would like to talk about and that is Harry's the Oath Keeper. Now he's a bastard son of a flea bottom whore and some uh, unimportant father. And uh, when you know when he grew up in flea bottom, he eventually joined a smuggler's ring uh, to provide for his mother and buy her a, a nicer house. Um, and unfortunately, she soon died thereafter. And on her deathbed, she demanded that he stop his 
dishonorable business, and uh, fulfilling his mother's last wish, Harry's joined the Gold Cloaks and instead arrested his former friends in the smuggler ring. Now, this earned him the name Oath Keeper since he kept his oath to his mother, um, but because of the death of his mother and his, you know, only companion he really had, and also because he betrayed his, his friends, his former companions, he, he became a little bit depressed and started to, uh, well, uh, drown his, his memories in, in wine and, and ale. Um, however, his actions actually made him rise quickly in the ranks of the, uh, of the Gold Cloaks, and eventually he was actually allowed to serve in the Red Keep under uh, Master Arms Quentin uh, Fireball. Um, so he, therefore, uh, when, when Quentin uh, decided to join us in our rebellion, uh, Harry's came with us and uh, bent the knee to the true king. Damon Blackfire. Now, I should mention that this character here, Harry's, is actually a custom character created by my Patreon supporter, OverG. And if you are a Patreon supporter as well, and uh, I know, Day Sniper, you're currently working on your character, but if you if you are a Patreon supporter and you want to create a character for this series as well, simply let me know. Um, don't worry that the series has already started. We can always add in the characters later, uh, just so you know. Okay, so that was basically all the important characters we have. There's a few more, uh, some of them I have not spoken about. Most of them are basically just the Lord Paramounts, but we also have like Bertrand Red Tusk, who's our current master at arms, one of the uh, best fighters uh, in the realm. And then we have got uh, Shira Sea Star, I think she's important as well, just because uh, there's a lot of, yeah, I guess, interesting uh, stories about her. And then we've, of course, also got Blood Raven. Uh, we'll see if he's going to clash with Bittersteel in this scenario as well. But yeah, um, I briefly mentioned that we have 10 children. All of them are, are still uh, quite young. And so I already uh, went ahead and gave them some education. Uh, basically, for the, uh, for the sons, the strong sons, I made them into fighters. And the girls are more, you know, on the diplomatic path. That's just usually what I go with. Okay, so with that done, I think we should have a look on our character once again. We are definitely going to go for the war focus here because, well, it fits our character, our personality, and at the same time, you know, we are currently at war. This is the most important war we're going to fight probably in our life, so therefore it makes sense. And as an ambition, there's a few things we can go for. Grooming an heir would be useful. We could uh, obtain a dragon egg, um, but it's probably going to take too long. Winning the war would gain us a one point of martial, higher lord, obtaining a greater throne would give us four prestige. But seeing our house rule the iron throne is probably more what we want to do, and that would give us diplomacy and intrigue, uh, and therefore I think that is probably what we're going to go for. Yeah, that will be our ambition. Uh, anything else that we need to do, we can set our crown focus, doesn't really matter much, but we might as well do it. And then we have our septon, uh, who needs to... Yeah, a Septon and our Maester that need to do something. That's fine. Treasurer, I will probably just have you collect taxes, although I don't think we're really going to get much out of this province here. This is a special province, an abandoned holding, so to speak, which has basically no troops and no tax, um, but it has like a fort level over 9,000, which makes it impossible uh, to, to, to be besieged, and therefore we cannot lose the war just by losing our province. I think that was the reason they did it. Yeah, other than that, we need to appoint a few minor titles, so let's go ahead and do that as well. We might want to switch out some characters here too. My wife is Spy Mastress, that's fine. Treasurer is Aubrey Ambrose, uh, who's also a formidable fighter. Then Bertrand Red Tusk, where we talked about as our master at arms. And then we've got Daron of Carpenter Town as Justice. 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 Just Why can't I not say that? Justice. Uh, Justice. Uh, I don't know, but we'll just uh, replace him and we'll uh, probably give this position to Sir Alma Craycall. He's the oldest man, but I feel like he he's the best suited for this job. There you go. And we'll just perform statecraft. I think that's the best we can do. And then as Castellan, hmm, I mean, I could put Quentin Fireball there. Um, I think I will. Yeah, you are my Castellan and, and that's fine. In fact... Yeah, you don't you don't need to do anything. That's that's okay. Now, special minor titles, a designated region. I think that will be my mother, Dana the Defiant, and then a few bodyguards can be picked. Now, I definitely want to have 
bit of steel as part of my bodyguard. I definitely want to have Harry's as part of my bodyguard, uh, just because it kind of makes sense. Then I think I'll have Red Tusk. I'll also add hmm, Byron, Gareth, Melvis Strong. Probably Melvis. Yep. And then lastly, Gareth. Or, yeah, you are just a better fighter, so there you go. You'll be my bodyguard as well. Master of Horse. Don't think this is particularly important at the moment. Um, but maybe I will switch out Byron Flowers as a command. And instead, I have my mother lead. She's got quite a lot. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I want to have my mother. Do I want to have my mother lead armies? Yeah, I kind of do. Yeah, all right. So we've got amazing commanders. Hi, Almana. Probably going to make my... You know what? I'm actually gonna give that to my wife. That's fine. She deserves it because she's been she's been faithful. And uh, master of hunt. I wonder if we have a hunter. I'd like to do that. No, we don't. Um, I mean, fine. The Kraykal will be master of hunt. Master of horse will give to probably my friend if I can find him. Uh, Quentin Fireball, and then Cupbearer. I'll probably give that to hmm, we've got a northman here interesting i'll probably give that to bit of steel there you go all right so with that all set up we are now finally going to start the time uh, i know it's been a while but you know there's so many things to set up it's it's important as well we don't want to rush through this okay now um as for commanders i'm obviously going to leave the center that is uh, actually Hmm, maybe, maybe I don't have to. You know what? No, I'm going to have Bittersteel lead the way, but I will lead a flank, and then we will have probably Gareth leading the other flank as well. Very good. Now, we have 15,000 men, and we are, if we quickly have a look, uh, we are fighting the Crownlands, we're fighting most of the Reach and Dawn, we're fighting half of the Westerlands, a small portion of the Riverlands, really not that much, and then we're also fighting the Vale. Now the North is probably not going to join in, so are the Iron Islands, the Stormlands are likely to join against us, uh, so that will be problematic. But I think our goal is King's Landing, so that's where we'll head, and hopefully the, uh, yeah, the army of Harrenhal is going to join us here. Okay, let's move the game forward a little bit and we'll see what happens. The Valyrian Freehold's politics was dominated by 40 families of great wealth, high birth and strong sorcerer's ability. Known as Dragon Lords, they spoke the high Valyrian language and had great skill in shaping stone. Incest and polygamy was a common practice among the blood of old Valyria. Okay, so basically this is just the uh, old, yeah, the blood of Valyria. Uh, okay, modified. That's fine. Good. We are obviously in command as well and yeah, we're gonna well, we could crush the Tullys. Mm, how many men does my brother have? 28,000. I've got 15,000. So you know what? No. We have... We, we gotta squish him. We gotta destroy his armies before they are able to uh, combine. Now, he does have the support... Yeah, of the... Of most of the great lords. But the Stormlands have not yet decided. I wonder... If Axel, uh, he's already married, unfortunately. What about Durin? He's married as well. Uh, and Marcella, you're married to a Lannister. Okay, so that's unfortunate. So he might join against us. He just created the title. Okay, a few titles have been created. That's fine. But he hasn't joined against us just yet. All right. Yeah, okay, all kinds of titles have been created. That's fine. Um. And Daron has created a title too. And my father-in-law has accepted our alliance. And just as I expected, yeah, we cannot ask him to, to join us. That's unfortunate. But one thing I will probably do, because we might be destroyed. We might lose, you know? I mean, here's the thing. This is a big war. I definitely want to try and win. But in the case that we lose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fabricate a claim on one of the Stepstones, Bloodstone, maybe, just because it's the most prestigious. And I hope that I can declare war and call in my father into, uh, my father-in-law, into this war, so that even if we get defeated, we're not unlanded. That's my plan, anyways. I know this is not necessarily what we would do, because we obviously believe that we can win, but, you know, just so that the game doesn't end if we are defeated. Just, you know, just as an, as an idea. Okay, anyways, let's move forward. We are making our way through to the Stokeworth. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're all creating titles. That's very nice. Um, but 
will crush the first armies of Daron. Alright, very good. And that was awesome. We already have a lord joining us. Laurent Payne. Excellent. More men of the Westerlands join us. Perhaps the Storm Lord is going to join us as well. It is, it is possible. Now, I am waiting for him to make his way to Rusby because if we were attack now, actually, we would not take it River Crossing. Never mind. We will attack then, I think. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we'll catch him. And my son Damon has improved his uh, dual skill. Wow. That is actually Damon Blackfire II, later known also as John the Fiddler. Uh, he's not really the greatest fighter, so I hope we can improve him a little bit here. Um, can I also force you to train? I could if I wasn't a commander. So I, we might want to do that. We might want to spend some time there. Um, we... Lord Paramount Donald of the Vale suffers a naval landing, interestingly, uh, but we don't, so that's probably the most important. And, oh, look at this. So it ends. That is interesting. Darren was already slain in combat. He was slain by Sir Gareth de Grey. Well, great job. That was quick. That was very quick. Um, I can't afford this foreign king. And yeah, so we now got our, ne well, our nephew, yeah, Baylor Breakspear, married to a Dondarian, uh, sitting down throne. Now, he is quite a stronger fighter, not, you know, not exact on our level, but still. And um, we are about to face Lord Wallace of Blackwater Rush, and um, who can I have? Sir Igor Bittersteel wants to fight. Sure, Bittersteel. Actually, you know what? I mean, I'm going to fight him pretty much. Yeah, prepared to die. He's just running away. I, I think I don't need Bitter Steel to fight my battles for me. Um, wow, okay. That was that was quite an interesting turn of events with, uh, well, with Darren already dying in the first battle, basically. And uh, we've already captured Simon of Faring Cross. Okay, well... I think on that note, we'll probably end this first episode. Uh, so, Baylor is uh, leading his men now. He, you know, he's still a pretty... Actually, this might not be that good for us, because he's now leading the main host, and he's a much better commander than his father was. So, we'll have to see. But anyways, as I said, I'll end this episode here. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.